How's it going, everyone? So yesterday, some important things happened with the Green Bay Packers salary cap, specifically seven contracts that they had did just void. And we'll get into exactly what that means here in a second. But in this video, I wanted to go over all seven of those contracts and what that's going to cost the Green Bay Packers this upcoming season. So first and foremost, you may ask, what does it mean if a contract voids? We talk about salary cap a lot on this channel, but if you are unsure, that's basically when the Green Bay Packers end up restructuring a player. They go, okay, this player is going to restructure and they're going to add void years onto that deal, allowing them to push some of that bonus out to further years, making the years now cheaper. So we saw the past two seasons, the Green Bay Packers um, had a lot of salary cap issues. The past two seasons, they were over the cap going into the new league year. They had to lower that, you know, get under the cap. And in order to do that, instead of cutting players and completely removing them off your team, they went the route of restructuring those players. Now, for the meantime, that's fine, but obviously pushing all that money out into the future, you're going to cause issues down the line, and that's what we're starting to see this year with these seven players. So with void years, you can add up to five void years onto a contract, and basically what the Packers did with some of these contracts is they restructured, added a few void years, and extended that bonus out through the rest of their contract plus the void years. Now, the problem with void years is when that contract is over and the player is not on that team anymore and they're in a pending free agent, all the bonus spread out through, say, three or four void years gets all pushed on to this next year. So that's what we're seeing with all seven of these players. If they were on the team, that bonus would still be pushed out through the void years. But the moment they're not on the team, all that's rest, all that bonus that's left, the, the salary that they converted to bonus and prorated it out through all those years is, is dealt right now. And yesterday was an important date because that was the deadline to strike deals with players uh, with upcoming void years on their contracts. So the Packers did this last year as well. They didn't sign anyone or extend anyone for that matter um, before the void deadline when they had many players on void contracts such as uh, Devondre Campbell and Robert Tunyon. They went on to re-sign them later, but that doesn't mean that money goes away. So whatever their mark is right now, that's guaranteed money. They are going to be paid it no matter what, even if the Packers, you know, re-sign them or, or extend them to a bigger deal. They're going to have to give them the new money plus what they owe them right now. And last year, like I said, they did that with Devondre Campbell. They gave him a new deal. Same with Robert Tunyon. But what they were owed on the void years was still paid in that deal. All right, so we're going to start with the biggest cap number out of all seven of these players, and that is Adrian Amos. So Adrian Amos, as we know, is an impending free agent. If we bring up his contract here, you'll see all these void years. You'll see when they restructured him, they added these four void year last year he had a cap hit of 7.2 million now this 7.9 million here that's all being accelerated to this year because he's not on the team anymore even though there's four void years and you know if he was on the team that would be spread out through those four void years now that he's not on the team he's an impending free agent the Packers have to pay that bonus that they pushed out and said okay we'll pay it later this is the time now they have to pay it later so regardless if Adrian Amos is on the team or not the Packers will be paying him 7.95 million dollars off the salary cap this year so you're going to be charged 3.5 percent of your salary cap for a player that's not even on the team and that's kind of the problem uh, a lot of people have and myself included with doing so many restructures especially when it's this much money because yeah sure in the short term you're going oh the Packers have so much cap space look what they can do they still have all these players they can go out and still trade for guys or sign guys but then you come to this season or the years that they're not on the team and their void year money has to be paid. It's a lot of money. This is a higher cap hit since he's had the last two seasons when he actually was on the team. That 5.9 in 2021, 7.2 in 2022. So you're paying more money for him when he's not on the team. And again, this doesn't mean the Packers won't go and re-sign Adrian Amos. Now, if they do that, then yes, if they sign him to a long-term deal, a multi-year deal, they could work and move that money around again, kind of do a, again, a booking thing, kind of making it cheaper for this year, pushing a little bit of money out. Obviously, then you're just kind of rewriting the same thing that's happening right now. But if the Packers do want to bring back Adrian Amos, that's likely going to be what's going to happen. The next highest player on this list is defensive lineman Dean Lowry. As we see here last year against the cap, he was a $6.8 million cap charge. He has three void years added on his deal due to the restructures the past two seasons and that charge this year is going to be three million just over three million so dean lowry of course an impending free agent now all that money that was pushed out into the void years has to be paid right now three million dollars 
I don't see the Packers re-signing Dean Lowry. I see them going younger with their defensive line with TJ Slayton, Devontae Wyatt. I think both of those guys need more snaps. I could see them bringing back uh, Jerron Reed, who actually is the next player on this list, which we'll get into here in a second, over someone like Dean Lowry or simply just drafting a couple defensive linemen in the draft. They do have 10 draft picks or even signing another you know, veteran free agent that could be cheaper. Now, obviously, they're still paying Dean Lowry no matter what. So they're going to be paying him $3 million for not being on the team. As I was saying, Jerron Reed is the next most expensive player. The Packers signed him to a one-year deal in last year's free agency, but it was basically a one-year deal with four void years, allowing them to push, you see, all this prorated bonus to 373000 out through those four void years. But now that he's an impending free agent and not on the team anymore, all of those 373,000s get accumulated into one, creating a $1.492 million cap charge in 2023. So last year when they signed him and you were looking at the contract, you're going, wow, that's really cheap for a nice veteran defensive lineman. He's only charged, he's only going to charge 1.758 against the cap, but you know, he's charging nearly that again, and they're not even going to have him on the team. Now, again, I could see them bringing back someone like Jerron Reed, uh, but same thing as Adrian Amos, if they were to extend him, they still owe him this $1.492 million. That does not go away. That would have to get added into his new deal. Then they can rework things based on that. The next player on this list is wide receiver Randall Cobb. He was signed through the 2022 season, and they added one void year, pushing $1.391 million out. So last year's cap hit, not that bad, $4.1 million. But again, all that bonus that they pushed out, they have to pay it. It's guaranteed money. It will never go away. So the cap charge for this season of Randall Cobb is $1.391 million. And I don't see him coming back unless Aaron Rodgers is 100% coming back. And that's a contingency again, okay? I want my guys back on the team, which is kind of getting old to me. I think they need to go young at wide receiver. And, and don't get me wrong, I love Randall Cobb. I love what everything he's given to this organization i love him as a person uh but i just do think they need to go younger at wide receiver i think they really need a, a young talented slot wide receiver true slot wide receiver in this draft i think they need to draft someone like that like jalen hyatt or something of that sort and go that route but hey he could be back but again it would likely just be like a one-year deal and this 1.391 million dollars would be have to be added onto that so his cap charge next year would likely be again somewhere around that four to five million dollar mark if they were to bring him back next on this list is tight end mercedes lewis as we see here he had two void years added on to his deal for five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars each year now he's a free agent so both void years combined into one for $1,050,000 here as a cap charge in 2023. I do see the Packers bringing back Mercedes Lewis. This one isn't that much of a big deal. Like, yeah, you owe him $1 million. I don't see his contract for one more year being that crazy. Yeah, you'll have to add that $1 million on it, but still. When you're talking about this little bit of a cap charge, I mean, this is 0.5% of your total salary cap. So it's not that big of a deal. The main ones that are problems are the uh, Adrian Amos mainly. That's by far the worst one. And also Dean Lowry. Um, I do see Mercedes Lewis potentially coming back regardless of Aaron Rodgers' decision. Um, I do think they still need this inline blocking tight end. They don't have another one on the roster. And would you want to you know, bring in a rookie to do that job? Obviously, Mercedes Lewis does an excellent job at that. And I, there are some other free agents that you could replicate that role. But I think Mercedes Lewis also wants to beat the record for the longest tenured tight end in the NFL through 39 years old. So I do see the Packers bringing him back. But regardless, they're going to be paying $1 million. The second to last player on this list is Mason Crosby. As we can see here, he had three void years on his contract at $335,000 a piece. That all gets accelerated into this year as he is also a free agent. And his cap charge for this year for not being on the team, just like Mercedes Lewis, just over $1 million. As we see last year, his cap charge was four point seven three five million i'm interested to see what they do with mason crosby seemed like he's kind of lost his power of his leg but he's still a consistent kicker when it's in within his range um i think he's pretty much done with kickoffs i think we need to find either you know a guy to do kickoffs or have 
Pat O'Donnell do it or something of that sort. I, I just feel like the Packers need to redo that. There's too many times where I feel like they needed to kick it out of the end zone for a touchback, and he simply just couldn't do it. There's multiple times they elevated Ramiz Ahmed um, to potentially do kickoffs, and Ahmed got hurt pregame, so Crosby had to do it, it was late in last season. It was, it was a mess. Um, you know, I, I potentially see the Packers moving on and, and, and getting a younger kicker, maybe even drafting someone like Jake Moody there in the seventh round. Mason Crosby, 39 years old, not getting any younger. Love Silver Fox, the dude, so many, so many clutch moments in Green Bay, but they might just be better off going younger getting another kicker and obviously there are going to be growing pains with that but nonetheless they're paying mason crosby a million dollars on the salary cap this year all right the last player on this list is tight end robert tunyon and this one is very minuscule it really doesn't matter too too much as we see here he only has one void year on his deal last year he had a cap charge of 3.25 million dollars not bad for robert tunyon they voided out uh five hundred thousand dollars to one void year so that's what they own this year, $500,000 uh, for impending free agent Robert Tunyon. I could see them bringing him back again on another one-year prove-it deal with some incentives, just like this last year deal. Uh, like I said, that $500,000 is not going to create much of havoc here in the salary cap. It's 0.2% of their salary cap. So that's why, you know, when you see this deadline come and go, uh, February 20th of the void year contract deadline, that doesn't mean they're not going to re-sign players like Mercedes Lewis, Robert Tunyon. Now, it doesn't kind of look that great for someone like Adrian Amos, because I feel like with that big of a cap charge due to the void year, you'd want to get that done before that deadline. So I don't know if they're looking to bring him back at this point. Haven't really heard anything on that. Rudy Ford's also an impending free agent. Darnell Savage is on the team costing $7.6 So they might be going, OK, do we really want to dump this much money? We're already going to be paying two safeties $7 million, and likely neither of them are going to be starting for our defense next year with Adrian Amos being a free agent and Darnell Savage, you know, not really being a starter caliber safety. They need to figure out that position this offseason. I think that's the number one priority. That and edge are huge needs for this defense. So the seven players, all of their void years, all the money the Packers owe them in 2023, that will total $16,000,000. $396,543 against the salary cap. And that's all for players that are not on the team. So now you can kind of start to see the issue with continuously restructuring contracts and pushing money out to the future and, and everyone going, oh, you know, this is great. The Packers are still in it. And I get like having to do that because sometimes you literally don't have a, another choice. I mean, you're not just going to go ahead and cut all these players. You wouldn't have a team. You'd be, you wouldn't have a competitive team at all. So it's like, you have to do it sometimes, but I mean, they kind of put themselves in the hole. And then of course the whole COVID year with the salary cap, you know, didn't go up at all. That was a problem as well. That put a lot of teams in this hole that they started to really start to restructure contracts, especially a team like the new Orleans saints is kind of in a worse off place in the green Bay Packers. But nonetheless, you're looking at a 16 over six, $16 million cap charge for these seven players that aren't going to be on your team as of right now. I mean, $16 million, that's worth like a, a really good defender or, or a really good wide receiver on your team if you were to go sign a new player. But we'll see in the upcoming weeks slash months if they do decide to bring some of these players back. Obviously, I think they have a bigger task at hand with the whole Aaron Rodgers situation. But that about does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like down below. And if you are new to the channel, we go over Packers news analysis and updates every single day ton of salary cap stuff draft stuff free agency stuff all of it here right on this channel go down and click subscribe but i'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching and as always go back up